Well, you can tell by the setting that uh, Camilla and I made it back home, and we're certainly glad to be back, and again, glad to spend a few minutes with you today looking at God's Word. And uh, we're going to continue in uh, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 1, and talking about this uh, very important idea, uh, practice, of how do we think and feel accurately? How do we do that based upon truth? How do we do it biblically? Because that's the key to our hearts and our lives being whole so that we can spill out on others in the love of God. Now, it doesn't mean that we deny what our five senses or our intuition are telling us but that rather we see those inputs through the light of God and his word. And this gives us the ability to reject lies and to not be susceptible, as verse 1 in Psalm 1 says, to the counsel of the wicked, to the path of sinners, and to those who sit in the place of authorities and scoff at God. So we can reject those things and we can re embrace and live in the truth of who God is. And in Psalm 1, we're told that when we do that, the picture is that we are like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And whatever one does, who is planted by that water, they prosper. And so we've looked at that some. I want to take us to a conversation today that Jesus had with a particular person who was going to end up, in fact, helping other people be planted by this river of water. And notice how Jesus uses this picture of how to become spiritually alive, and how to live in relationship with God uh, with this particular person. And, it, and I might even say before I read it, this account that Jesus has begins, as it so often does, with a person that, humanly speaking, is probably one of the most unlikely people. And yet, she's a great influencer of others, and she will use that influence for the sake of the good of others. We're in John chapter 4. And Jesus has left Judea, and they went into Galilee. And verse 4 says, and he had to pass through Samaria. Why did he have to plant, pass through Samaria? Because there were some people there that needed planted by the river of living water. They needed to believe upon him. And so Jesus begins this conversation with a woman who comes there. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give them shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Jesus uses this Psalm 1 picture. And as we know, the story goes on and she believes in Christ. In other words, she's planted by God. 
in a relationship with God in the person of Jesus Christ, or if you will, using the picture from Psalm 1, she becomes a tree planted by the, the living water, and it now begins to spring up in her and flows through her. And other people are told in the city in which she lives. And verse 41 says, Many more believed because of his word. And, and we see that God in this town in Samaria planted many trees by this river of water that sprung up within them to eternal life. Let me ask you to remember the day that you believed. If you were a child, maybe uh, you were just a seedling or uh, just a little beginnings of a tree, a sprout of a tree, when you became planted by the streams of living water and you began to grow spiritually by drinking of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe as an adult like I was, you were transplanted and taken out of the world where you were drinking and, uh, and, and just participating in the things that do not bring life, do just the opposite. And God just transplanted us and put us besides the stream of living water. And since that day, we have been drinking up the realities of this living water, which remember Isaiah 55 says, is God's word to us that shows us the beauties of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we are today. And our well-being continues to be dependent upon how much we think and feel accurately because we're drinking deeply of God's word. We're drinking deeply and worshiping fully the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And let's not forget our role and even our responsibility to have conversations with others like the woman at the well or the people that are in the city because they too need to be planted by the spring, the river of living water. They need to experience Jesus placing them in a relationship with God the Father so that within them there springs up a well of water to eternal life. Oh, what an abundance of life give, God gives us. And what an amazing picture it is, represented by water. May we drink deeply of the water of life today, and may we share it profusely with those who need to be transplanted. God bless you as you do that.